here is somewhat complex. Um, generally, I have a history of over 10 years creating virtual reality artwork. So usually when I say the word immersive, it generally is referred to meaning visually or sensorially immersive. You're actually putting you know, virtual computer generated images totally around a user, whether through head on display or projections. Um, however, more and more we're finding um, that immersion is usually being meant much more on the sort of narrative storytelling aspect. So an immersive story is something that's very, very deep. So in alternate reality games, it refers to what Tracy was talking about when you're actually delving down to every single character, every single sort of plot line, every event that's mentioned, every organization that's mentioned has a website, has an email address, has, you know, photos. So that, you know, those players, you know, this to bring it back to sort of popular culture, culture things like the Star Wars universe or Avatar, um, you know, the, the Wikipedia is a really good example of this, this concept of immersion. For those people who are really hardcore, dire fans, they can actually delve down to the very most minute detail of these virtual characters. So uh, we're kind of trying to uh, pull out some features of this, this pirate <laughs> the AR ARG. So one of them is that uh, it's we're kind of looking, we're kind of defining them as a social thing. So whether that be through leveraging kind of um, social platform platforms or through um, actually old school person to person interpersonal kind of connections on the street in a neighbourhood. So for an example. Um, a corner both, market. Yeah, in both, in both our game and one of the, the games from the Games of Nonchalant, uh, you actually had to go into a retail store and, and search for things. You end up asking questions, engaging kind of people on the street in, in your search and your in your kind of journey through. So, um, and also too, they're social in that you, you can play with, it's actually fun to play with a group of people, mm -hmm. you know, it's, um, local as well. So. Unlike a lot of the the work, so like 2049, and um, which is is fantastic because it's global. Uh, what we enjoyed about the games of nonchalance, and particularly with what we were tasked with with our with our game, um, it, it had to do with a localized area. So we would make use of local features and local knowledge and and kind of a novel interaction um, of you know of space. So um, mobile. Uh, so smartphones is the primary demarcable device, so you're untethered, there's inter interactivity and storytelling that can happen through through this device, and we're hoping for some degree of persistence as well, so integrating, have you got there, integrating physical spaces? That will likely last. So, I mean, persistence is actually, it's a really big challenge for any physical game or any virtual game. I mean, who knows how long you know, these APIs that we're currently using are actually going to be supported on future mobile, you know, platforms. Who knows how long this corner bar or gallery is actually going to last? Is it going to be a year, five years, ten years, a hundred years? Um, so integrating, you know, physical spaces that we hope will actually be around um, for as long as yeah. possible so that people can continue to actually play the game. So replayability is, is a big, big part of it. All right. So local art is what we've it's gone through a number of different names, but we've decided on this for now. <laughs> so Local Art is the game that we developed, and we developed it in North Park. And um, one of the primary aims, so we were tasked with um, connecting to artist-run spaces um, for um, the series of art walks and cultural community events that were happening. And, uh, and to do that, we were looking at interesting ways of um, so yeah, it was like about two block, was it two and three block? Yeah, about four or five four, four or five blocks difference between the two and one of the central, and there was something happening in the middle. So we had to kind of work out a way of connecting uh, these two spaces that were at the extreme end um, of the kind of central kind of activities. And so we did that through uh, an exploration of both public and private spaces. And uh, yeah, we keep going. We would say so. So, and um, what we had to consider in our our game design was we wanted replayability. Right. So this art walk happens uh, every month, once a month. Is that right? Yeah, I think or, so. Once a month. Yeah, once a month. The Ray at Night art walk. I don't know if anyone from San Diego might be familiar with that. It's been around for many, many years. Yeah. So we just didn't want it to be a one-off event. We wanted, uh, you know, people that came across our our flyers and our posters 
to be able to play it whenever they wanted to. And if they couldn't bad night, they could come back at another time. So we wanted it to be consistent. There was no budget for this. <laughs> yeah, I mean, a lot of ARGs have huge budgets, five, six figure budgets. Which is why the games of Nonchalance in 2049 is so impressive. They've got you, they're, they're amazing. But uh, we had no budget, so we begged and borrowed, but we didn't steal. <laughs> and so we had to we had to work we had to work in actually a really limited time frame. We had less than two weeks to develop this and we had to work with you know, minimal resources. So we relied on photocopies, we relied on stickers, we relied on things to help. <laughs> um, and so we were talking briefly about backstory. So one of my main tasks was um, to develop the story and um, we have like in this game there's two kind of opposing fractions so each one of those fractions so one you find out a little bit about the other kind of gets sort of revealed over the course of but still not yet act two will have the big reveal of the of the second group but to do that i had to plot out and uh we'll get to the yeah, yeah, so the, uh, we had to kind of work out how, how these kind of groups function and what they needed to support them. So we have Facebook accounts, we have Gmail, we have, it was ridiculous, I was using four different browsers to swap between all of these different oh, things. It's, 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 it's crazy, <laughs> you have no idea who you are anymore. Yeah. <laughs> that was the question about the Facebook one, which same thing with creative Facebook characters yeah. to contact people and interact with them. Thing and have like then private groups within the Facebook one. Yeah. But um, technically, you're not supposed to make a, you know, like a fake person's account. Yeah. Because of the product that I was working on, we kind of ignored that. Yeah, but, yeah, so do we. Um, as you do the same thing, basically. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so we we have this uh, we have this this one page. So all of my three fake characters from one side all talk to each other on the face yes, yeah, yeah. page. That's that ridiculous yeah, yeah. thing. Cool. So, yeah. And then, you know, actual real world people start to join in that yeah. conversation. It, it's very strange. Yeah. So, yeah. You develop multiple personalities as you keep right. walking we're in gonna, and out of our yeah. conversation. Well, thank you. So, <laughs> let's just, really weird. Weird. We're going to get to that actually in one slide. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, yeah, so this was sort of like a branching narrative uh, structure, a little bit of a choose your own adventure. Um, so for the best part, you follow clues from one point to the ne next, but um, that feeds into the idea of being like replayable as well. For when we included um, retail stores, I, I always worried when it was like, if it was closed, how players would be able to play, because we, we suffered that in San Francisco when we played one of the games. So we have options here. If, if the store is open, you follow one path. If it's closed, you follow another. So we've kind of built that into the game a little bit. Okay. Right. You want to talk? You want me to um, yeah, sure. I'll do a little bit. Okay. So uh, this is one of the examples of the posters that was put up um, in a store. So here you can see, um, you know, we have a player uh, taking a picture using just you know the standard um, what's it called the barcode reader. You know that that which comes on most smartphones these days, I guess, um, and taking a photo of that. And we actually, if you if you notice there, it's a little bit hard to see, we actually embedded our little symbol inside the middle of the QR code there. It's a nice little subtlety. And those, those we actually put all over the neighborhood also. And I would just like, I just want to say one thing as a, an embarrassed visual artist. These posters are designed yeah. by yeah. fictitious, like, fictitious characters that are in their 50s and yeah. not very good with, you know, illustration. Technology yeah, at all. Exactly. Right. So that's the aesthetic yeah. we were going for, right. like community-based so, stuff. Yeah, and so we also did public video screenings and, like we were saying, the, the Facebook page. Um, so and I apply that, that same logic to this, this video too, which is highly embarrassing as a right. professional visual So artist. this is one of the fake organizations. <laughs> this is one of the guys who keeps commenting and is really upset with us. Um, it's... <laughs> <laughs> So this was the video that we screened um, at a couple of galleries. Yeah. <laughs> so basically, yeah, that that was one of uh, the rabbit holes. 
and a forum for people to actually engage and sort of talk through the game. Um, all right, so uh, these are some of the actual game elements that we incorporated into the gameplay. Um, so when you first enter the game, you get an uh, audio file that automatically plays, and I think I have that here. Welcome, friend. Be assured this will lead you to your rightful destination. Be mindful of trees and overhangs so your phone has a clear view of the sky. Be warned there are stops along the way. Be on the lookout for intelligence in the field. Be aware using layer and map view sometimes works better than the camera view. After completing each step on your journey, click on the new symbols which appear in your map. Stay vigilant. F. O. R. So, you know, we felt we actually had to do this, even though it's pretty kind of didactic and really sort of, I mean, it's, it's almost outside, it's almost breaking the tinag. This is not a game kind of aesthetic because you're, you're actually talking about the game mechanics. Because we, we chose to use Layar for, for the main platform for this experience. And, you know, Layar is great in that it sort of has kind of, you know, most of the things that we want. Um, it's just super buggy, um, and there's a lot of problems. And it's not just with Layar, it's really just where the state of technology is with augmented reality design on mobile phones. Um, but, you know, we'll get into some of those problems, problems later, but that's why we kind of needed to actually make that sort of disclosure with the techie stuff. Um, but some of the other stuff that we did was basically we used um, mainly POI, so we weren't using near-field AR, it was really more geo-located clues. Um, and each POI had buttons associated with it, so kind of like what you see here. Um, the ready to begin play first, or skip ahead to number two. We had to do these little skip ahead things because sometimes you actually couldn't get to the next location, so it's sort of a cheat button. Um, and then uh, we would also have a lot of auto proximity triggers, so when you actually walked up to